Okay, uh, hello everyone, my name is David Merulla and I'm really happy to have you here in our uh, BioLab slash recording cabin at NanoLive in Switzerland for this second webinar about the 3D Cell Explorer. The title of the webinar of today is For the Infinite Live Cell Imaging, but I'm not the star of, the cell of, of this webinar, so let me show you the real star. And since it is here, let me start it and let's make it work. Okay, so before di jumping directly into the webinar, let me give you some uh, information. The webinar out of today it will last about uh, half an hour, um, half an hour, 40 minutes, depending on the amount of questions that you have. Uh, we will see a lot of uh, uh, pictures and video, so don't be shy, um, go full screen with uh, your, uh, your image and increase the resolution as much as possible. You have the possibility to interact directly with us. My colleague Lisa Polaro in the back office is actually uh, collecting the questions that you can send us as to our this Q&A panel that you have on the uh, side of your screen. Okay, so we are almost ready uh, to start. But if you are anything like me, you are probably uh, looking at this webinar, answering an email and answering the phone at the same time, uh, please uh, give to this webinar the, 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 the attention uh, required because it's going to be a really interesting half an hour well invested. Okay, so um, this is what we do. This is a 3D reconstruction of a living cell made in a completely non-invasive manner real time with our 3D Cell Explorer at a push of a button. So for the table of uh, content for today is extremely uh, simple. We will have a first part in which we will tell you how to increase the in vivo relevance or, of your in vitro assay. Inside this part we will have two demos, one to show you how to collect an image and the second one how to collect a time lapse directly on uh, the Steve and the 3D Cell Explorer. Then we will move on to a second part of uh, application. So it's a collection of uh, examples and experiments that we did here in our uh, BioLab or thanks that our customers uh, passed over to us, showing you uh, a specific example of what I've just told you before. And then we will end with the Q&A the, the Q panel because we want to know what you think about it and we want to have your feedback. Okay. So, I'm a, um, a biologist as a trainer, and uh, um, what biology wants is to give a uh, real answer to biological problems. Okay, so what does it, what does it mean? That we want our model to uh, be more, as much as possible in vivo relevance. And this is uh, for, this for this reason that we are uh, moving from uh, cell stem, um, cellular lines uh, towards more and more complex models like primary and stem cells to mimic the genotype and the, uh, uh, and the epigenetic structure of your cell uh, or um, to co-culture and on-chip uh, through co-culture to have synergistic effect and uh, uh, on-chip and 3D scaffold to mediate, uh, wo simulate what are the mechanical properties of the matrix surrounding the cells, up to uh, organoids to really mimic even the physiological uh, uh, condition of those cells. So all in all, what's happening is that we are moving from a reductive model based on very useful uh, cell lines, stable cell lines, to a holistic model to mimic the complexity of the, of the real environment. Now, independently on how advanced is uh, your cellular model, there is, uh, a, system, a study is not composed only by the model, but also by the system that you use to look at this model. And this is where 
the traditional uh, type of microscopy, which is invasive, it's market dependent, and most of the time end point, it started to show its uh, limit. So we're talking about a live cell limit. Let me explain a little bit better what I mean. So, um, all, and this is true also for the uh, last uh, um, Nobel Prize winning technology, all the latest microscopy technology needs to have a fluorescent marking add to the cells. Now, besides the um, problem of adding uh, an exogenous marker to an in vivo uh, in, in, uh, as much as possible uh, close to in vivo condition uh, uh, gives you. The laser, the power of the laser that is required to uh, excite those fluorophore, it's often incompatible with normal physiological condition and it cre creates bleachy, bleaching, phototoxicity, and it limits a lot the time for which we can observe ourselves. So those techniques, although extremely powerful and with incredible resolution, are live cell limited. On the other side of the spectra, we have the so-called marker-free uh, microscopy technology, like, for instance, phase contrast. Those are extremely in vivo light compatible, but they are discovery limited in the sense they have low resolution, they lack the specificity of marking, and they cannot provide 3D reconstruction. So, between Life's Limited and Discovery Limited, there is a big space for research. And this is where the 3D Cell Explorer comes to the fore to, to fill the space for fundamental scientific discovery. And this is um, possible because we combine the good sides of the two uh, technology already existing. And this happens because we are completely non-invasive. We are non, uh, we don't mediate uh, bleaching, we don't mediate for the city, and because we are totally marker free. Let me show you how this is possible. Um, cells are transparent and they offer little contrast for microscopy. But it is true that uh, for all the transparent meat, all the transparent media have a um, physical marker. This physical marker is the refractive index. To have an idea of what the refractive index is, you can look at this glass of water. At the interface between air and water, the straw looks broken because the refractive index is extremely difficult. Now, if you are able to measure precisely point by point this physical property of the system and locate it where it belongs, you can reconstruct the 3D structure of the system uh, glass, water, air. And this is basically precisely what we are doing thanks to the uh, 3D Cell Explorer in this right now. So, besides being uh, absolutely non-invasive, the, the measuring of the refractive index offer other advantages. First, it's extremely fast. We have about 1.5, 1.7 seconds for complete 3D reconstruction. And second, being a physical market, so differently from uh, GFP, it's absolute unit, it's not relative unit, can really be used to selectively mark something and do quantitative analysis. So I hope that you will agree with me if I'm telling you that using uh, the 3D Cell Explorer and its completely non-invasive imaging system will increase the in vivo relevance of your study independently from which type of model that you are using. So let's meet Steve. Let me show you how we can uh, create those meaningful images just thanks to a few click stop acquiring. So Steve has three panels, the left one, the central one, and the right one. In this panel here, you have uh, a 96Z uh, uh, stack image that I'm now scrolling through from the bottom up to the top. Okay, you can really appreciate the details. Let me stop here. You can also zoom in. You can 
I say that you are interested in marking this big blob here. You go down, you select the color, yellow for the big blob, and you are hovering on this section. So what you see in the central panel is that some pixels are highlighted. When I release the mouse, this will uh, tell to the software to identify a region of refractive index and gradient and to color in yellow all the pixels that fall into those regions. And this will happen independently of where those pixels are on the focal plan. Also, this information will be used to mediate 3D reconstruction of your uh, cell. Now, I have added one color. Let me add several other colors for several other regions. For instance, this part here. Okay. Or this part here. Now, you can see how by few clicks I've been able to generate a 3D reconstruction of my cells. This central panel here, based on physical, a physical property, is a real marker, so you can save it and, most importantly, you can apply it again. So, I have prepared already a stain for the cells with a little bit more time, and this is how they look like. Thanks to this stain, you can really see all the structures very well. And again, you can follow them through and through. Okay, let me restart Steve. You just go here, don't say, set that, and go back to our presentation. So, we managed to obtain meaningful 3D reconstruction. So let's tackle another limited, another limit. As the latest Nobel Prize uh, winning winner for chemistry uh, says, you really need to be able to look at living cells because life is animated. This is what defines life. And that's for this reason that we put a lot of effort into developing an instrument that has an extremely uh, low uh, power laser and also uh, is compatible and has, we developed in collaboration with EBD, a specific incubator so that we can maintain the required physiological conditions. So altogether, we can really perform no infinite, non-invasive 3D live cell imaging. And I think that you will agree with me that we can consider this as a, a strong increase of the in vivo relevance. So be able to perform non-invasive and uh, continuous and infinite uh, 4D measurements. So let's move on and finally show you the complete system. This is the, uh, this is my hand, hello. This is the 3 cell Explorers, you know it before. Uh, if you've been watching at our webinar, uh, this you saw it just briefly. This is the top stage incubator developed with EBD. It comes with uh, uh, the temperature control that allows you to set uh, one temperature for the lead and one temperature for the plate so you can avoid condensation and the gas mixer. This will allow you to control the CO2 amount, the oxygen amount, uh, the temperature of the gas, and even the humidity and even work in hypoxia if you connect it at a stream of uh, nitrogen. So with this very system, it's important that, to say that we've been able to perform um, days long experiments. So uh, inside of the incubator, we have a flora dish containing some B16 cast cells that we were uh, playing with just before. So we are 
can perform the time lapse, but since we want to show you the result of, the, of this time lapse at the end of uh, the webinar and just before the QA, I'm going to add a little drop of uh, uh, cellular debt inducer. So I'm going to stop the uh, acquisition right now. So we will see something happening in the video at the end. So I will try to not enter too much into the camera. Same time, we will be to not touch too much now. Okay. Very good. Let me be sure that I haven't touched now. Okay. And then let's start again. So here I was using this sys panel here for focusing, and then I just showed you before. So here we are now focusing. Okay, and we can launch our time lapse. We don't want to say what was done before because it takes like a few seconds. Uh, we just have to tell you how many frames do we want. So one every 30 seconds is enough. And then telling when to stop, we are happy with stopping manually. Okay, boom. Here we go. 3D Cell Explorer has started. Okay. Let's back to our let's be back to our presentation. So uh, we have a system that uh, provides meaningful images in a completely non-invasive uh, fashion and for an unlimited amount of times. Now the question is, can we do any better? The idea is yes. The 3D Cell Explorer, of course, yes, is a very intelligent instrument. The optics is made to be self-adjusting, adjusting. So uh, it allows it, it is always uh, in order to work in the best condition across time. These features make it so that it's easy to use. You just have to push a button and the microscope does everything by itself. It makes it compatible with most of the uh, standards used commonly in microscopy, such as flora dish, cover slips, and even shear stress chambers, and robust, as it allows the microscope to compensate for any uh, little variation that can occur across time. So the question is, what is this useful for? Well, um, if we look at the normal experiment, you have a stimulus, you look at an effect, and you have a result. Thanks to our system, you can obtain the most out of, of your experimental model. Because being so easy and fast, you can really get real-time information and perform regulations on the flight. Now, thanks to this uh, real-time feedback, you can really further increase your experimental relevance. In summary, you can choose between traditional microscopy or the 3D cell explorer. On one hand, you have a system that is bulky, uh, really expensive. Let me tell you that the 3D cell explorer costs a fraction of uh, the system, and you can uh, purchase it with uh, the lifetime, the, uh, the top stage incubator on our website or thanks to our local distributors. Uh, this system also requires uh, normally a stabilized table and uh, a dark room, so most of the time you need it to have it into a core facility. Well, instead, the 3D Cell Explorer is really cell-friendly and also operator-friendly, so you can have it on your bench and use your time to perform meaningful in vivo uh, experiments and not to uh, use it to book a uh, uh, microscope or spend time in registering. Okay, so boo, boo, boo. hello. So now we are uh, getting into the second part of uh, this webinar uh, where I'm going to show you some um, examples and uh, that, that we collect. The first one that I want to show you is the example of a primary cells uh, 
image in a completely non-invasive manner in 3D. So, for this example, I have to thank Stefan Peter, uh, R&D manager at Anglid Europe. Uh, it's a company in the uh, United Kingdom that it's working on circulating tumor cells. What you can see here, it, those are um, peripheral monocytes, blood monocytes, in a company of some red blood cells. So this is a healthy sample. And this is a little bit of a nasty situation. So you have the same actor uh, as before, but also some circulating tumor cells. Now, the phenotypical difference is striking already by eye. You, can, you are able to discriminate, but uh, specifically for this image, we've been able to identify a marker that applies only to the uh, circulating tumor cells. If you want to know more about this story, this is a part of a blog post that we have on our site. You can find much more information. This particular one is at nanolive.ch slash CTCS, but just go on the site, you will find much more. Okay, now let's move on with the experiment. With uh, the examples, we have uh, uh, a 3D scaffold material and a cell growing on chip. So, um, those are ELA cells encapsulated in alginate uh, beads generated using by the she drop Pico technology mounted on a she flex arise S3 uh, from Shinion AG in Germany. So what you can see, what you can see here is that first we can see through the alginate and image our cells. Then they are we are able to identify a digital marker specific for the alginate and other two markers specific for the cells. And this allowed us to follow the growth. In a, of the cells in a completely non-invasive manner when they are uh, in this system mimicking matrix. Uh, also, these uh, pictures come from a blog post. Again, go on our website, search for the uh, blog post, and you will have a lot of information, a lot of possible application. Um, for this uh, uh, example, I have to thank Wenting Zhao from the Material Science and Engineering Department at Stanford University. Um, so here we can see a eukaryotic cell growing on a glass surface filled with uh, nanopillars. This to mimic the real uh, mechanical adhesion condition in the organism. So what you can see, for instance, here is how the membrane is going all around those pillars. So really have specific local information and 3D structure. Okay, let's move on and show you some cell lines in a, a kinetic uh, manner, so a kinetic XA. So please note that we are not going throughout all the examples, but this is just to show you how many uh, things we have been already capable to do and how much more things you can actually do with this technology. So, what you can see here is a, a video of a macrophage patrolling around and trying to identify what is self and what is non-self. Uh, he decided that this cells is self, lucky. So this is the grayscale image based on refractive index and this is the 3D view. On this side we have uh, the same images that have been processed here to identify the body mass, the center of uh, gravity, let's say, of the, uh, of the cell. And here we are able to um, track the movement of this center of mass so to identify speed and angular velocity. Another beautiful example that we have here is a non-invasive 4D segmentation. This is a fibroblast undergoing mitosis and you can see how the chromosome are aligning at the center of the cell here. Uh, and then they are gently, the cell is bulging and they are gently separating to originate. Uh, here we are. They are, here we have the separation and then the production of two cells. So please note how we can have a lot of feedback information in completely real uh, time manner and non-invasive. 
going moving forward with this example uh, we can use the same type of images to really have to really quantify this feedback and let me show how so this is the same video as seen before if you look at this cross here it's the same cross that is moving throughout this one, two, three, four, five different stain. This means that we've been able to identify five colors representing five type of condensation states of the chromatin. And we can use those color as a marker of a specific state of the cell. And we can have this information real time in a completely non invasive way. Along the same line of thinking, we've been able to use, uh, to uh, exploit the uh, 3D uh, structure capability, the 3D imaging of the, the cell explorer to follow the thickness of the same cell. Again, we can use this as a marker in real time. And for instance, if we are working on uh, the, the, the cellular cycle, we can add an antimitotic drug exactly when we want it. Okay, so let me go on with uh, another, uh, the last examples that we have for which we are extremely happy because is the uh, concerning the first publication that has been made with uh, a commercially available 3D cell explorer. So for this, I have to thank Professor Tsutomu Masujima from the Single Cell Mass Spectrometry Lab at Riken. Institute in Japan and uh, what they did was by coupling coupling the 3D cell explorer with a system of micro pipettes he and his group were able to precisely uh, measure the amount of uh, volume of cytosol connect, collected so basically they were able to understand how much was this variation in volume uh, so subsequently they were able to inject this collected cytosol into a gas mass and provide not only the relative concentration of the alanate, but the absolute concentration of that. And this is possible because it was possible to get real-time information about the volume uh, and what was happening inside uh, the cells, thanks to the real facility of, of use and accessibility of the 3D cell explorer. So now that we have uh, done with our examples and experiment, let me show you the result of the time lapse of our dying uh, cell culture. So here we are, Steve, uh, and I will leave you for those uh, two minutes and that I will use to collect your questions. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a lot of uh, thinking about. So we are ready to uh, answer your uh, questions. The first question that we had is how fast can you go with the time lapse? Um, it's, uh, I'm repeating it, it's about uh, 1.5 uh, seconds per image, but probably the best thing is to show you this example here. So those are uh, Negleria, those are some amoeba, and for those I have two tanks, some Lord from UCSF. Um, so those uh, cells are known to be extremely fast. They move about 10 micrometers per minute, which is a lot. And you can really see them dashing through the field of the object. Uh, this is uh, played only two times uh, faster. Okay, we were able to follow this, the movement of the cells by uh, pushing the limit of uh, the instrument to the max, which is again 0.7 frame per second. Okay, so and this is the type of result that you can have. You can really see and appreciate how you can still able to see all the movements of the membranes and the different contraction of the vacuoles and so on, so forth. Um, how big is the, the amount of data that you generate? Um, 
So let's get back to Steve. Uh, this what we are going to, what we are saving is uh, normally the uh, grayscale image and the panel. Now the 3D reconstruction. The 3D reconstruction is just a consequence, and each of those uh, 96 Z stack uh, takes up about 50 megabytes. Um, to put it in another words, if you make a time lapse every five minutes for eight hours, the morning after you will be having collected about uh, two gigabyte of uh, uh, movie, which is really not that. Uh, also, another question we have about the resolution. So um, you can see here that our uh, field of view is 80 by 80 by 30 microns, and uh, I'm telling you that we have a resolution of uh, 200 nanometer uh, on X and Y, and uh, 500 nanometers on Z. Um, so, the last question, I guess, that we have, unless there are any other um, questions that pop in at the very last minute, it's how long were you able to image your cells uh, for at the maximum? So, the thing is, uh, when we tried, we did about four days of uh, um, measurement, and what happened is that we ran out of uh, gas tank. So the limiting factors are how much gas, how much CO2 you have available, uh, how much space you have on your hard drive, but we've seen that uh, this is not a real problem. And uh, the limiting factor, the real limiting factor for the instrument is when cells converge of uh, uh, too thick layer. What does it mean? That the layer is not transparent anymore and two, we are not able to image. How much is a uh, thick layer too thick? Uh, so we've been able to measure up to uh, 10, 15 microns thickness. Okay, so and uh, with this, I would like to uh, leave you with, uh, uh, we are at the end, but I would like you to leave you with, I would like to leave you with this slide here. Uh, so please think about all the examples that we've been showing you today and at all the possible uh, application that you can still use the 3D Cell Explorer and makes a uh, fantastic discovery. So, see you next time. It has been a pleasure. Bye-bye.